Hello everybody, my name is Mohamed Sheikh uh, from Concordia University. Uh, in this talk, I am going to present our integral attacks against uh, reduced round version of the twiscapel polycipher uh, uh, T-twine. So first, I will give a brief introduction about the integral craft analysis and the specification of T-twine. Uh, then I will show how we can use the bit-based division property to find several integral distinctions uh, that cover 19 rounds of uh, T-twine. Uh, after that, I will show how we convert these distinguishing attacks to key recovery attacks uh, against 27 and 28 rounds of T-twine. Uh, uh, so integral crypt analysis is one of the most powerful crypt analysis technique uh, to evaluate the security of block ciphers. Uh, in general, uh, uh, integral crypt analysis is performed in two steps. Uh, the distinguishing attacks and the key recovery attack. Uh, in distinguishing attack, uh, we construct a specific set uh, of plain text X that give after some rounds uh, another set uh, Y. And if the XO sum of over uh, this set is always zero, irrespective, to of, the, uh, irrespective of the using uh, secret key, we can distinguish this reduced round block cipher from the random permutation and we have integral characteristic. Uh, after that, we can convert this distinguishing attack uh, to key recovery attack by appending some round after the distinguishing, distinguisher. Uh, and uh, when we get the cipher text uh, set Z, uh, we guess the round key and partially decrypt this set to another version of uh, the set Y. Uh, and if the XO sum of this set is not uh, to zero, we discard the, redu uh, the guessed round key uh, because it's wrong. Uh, in general, the, uh, there are three methods uh, to find the integral uh, characteristic. Uh, the first one is by evaluating the propagation of the integral properties. Uh, and the second one is by estimating the algebraic degree of the nonlinear part of the cipher uh, block cipher. Uh, this method is also called higher order differential crypt analysis. And the third method is the division property. Uh, the division property is introduced by Todo at EuroCrypt 2015 at, uh, as a generalization of the integral property that can also exploit the algebraic degree. Uh, at Fast Software Encryption 2016, uh, Todo and Domori introduced a special case of the division property called uh, the bit-based division property. Uh, the bit-based division property, we will use it in our attack. Uh, to understand the division property, we needed to define two uh, functions, uh, the bit product function and the parity function. Uh, for two uh, binary vector x and u, the bit product function is defined as a multiplication of some sel uh, of selected bits of from x, uh, and the selection is based on uh, the value of the selector uh, u. If the value of the bit of u is one, then the corresponding bit of x is included in the multiplication. Uh, and the parity function uh, is defined as the XO summation of the bit product function of uh, X uh, and U over a set uh, X. Shortly, uh, the, se uh, the set X has a division property K if uh, for any selector U, such that uh, the vector U is less than uh, K, the parity is zero. Otherwise, the parity is unknown. Uh, in another word, is, uh, the space of U is divided in two groups. The first one where the parity is unknown, and the second one is the uh, where the parity is uh, zero. Uh, so how to find the, uh, an integral uh, characteristic using the division property? First, assume we have uh, a plain text set X uh, that have a division property KX. And by using the propagation rule of the division property, we can obtain uh, the division property KY corresponding to the output set Y. Suppose we have wanted, uh, suppose uh, the output Y is represented, for example, in four bits, Y0, Y1, Y2, and Y3. And wa we wanted to check if uh, the XO sum of Y3 over the set 
uh, y is equal to zero uh, or uh, or not. This means that a uh, check the parity uh, is equal to zero for the successor uh, v equal to zero 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 one. And for the definition, uh, from the definition of the bit-based division property, uh, this equation is valid if and only if the vector, the selector vector uh, v is not in the division uh, pro division property k y. So uh, for n uh, block cipher, the time and the memory complexities to compute the bit-based division pro uh, property uh, through uh, the block cipher component are roughly equal to to the power n. So for block cipher with a block size greater than 32, it will be infeasible to handle this propagation. Uh, this problem is solved by Xiang et al. at Asia Crypto 2016 uh, by defining a new notation called the division trail. Uh, by using the division trail, the process of finding the integral characteristic using the bit division property can be automated using several techniques such as uh, MILB and set solver. Uh, we will use uh, the MILB uh, in our attack. Uh, so this is the MILB model for the basic operation copy, XOR, and AND. Uh, also, we can model the propagation of the bit-based division property through the S-box uh, as uh, MILB constraints by representing it using its algebraic normal form and the H representation of its convex hull. Uh, in the following, I will uh, revisit uh, the specification of T-twine. Uh, typically, uh, a traditional block cipher takes two inputs. Uh, a block of plain text uh, and the secret key to generate uh, a cipher uh, text. And since the block cipher uh, used deterministic algorithms for encryption and decryption, uh, every time we encrypt the same plain text under the same key, uh, we get the same cipher text. So uh, to get a different cipher text, we have to change uh, the used secret key, which may be expensive. From here, uh, the idea of two couple block cipher uh, to solve, uh, come to solve this problem. Uh, the two couple block cipher take a, a, an auxiliary input called the tweak. Uh, using the tweak and the key, uh, the, uh, we can select the permutation over the message space. So by changing the tweak, uh, which should be cheap, we get a different cipher text using uh, the same key. In general, there are two uh, approaches to build a trickable block cipher. The first one by using a traditional block cipher uh, in, uh, oper uh, in uh, operation mode, uh, and the second one using dedicated constructions such as uh, skinny and uh, twine. Uh, T-twine block cipher is the first lightweight dedicated uh, trickable block cipher uh, built on generalized Feistel structure. It is an extension of the conventional block cipher twine. And similar to twine, T-twine has two variants, T-twine uh, 80 and T-twine 128. These two variants uh, using the use the same block size of 64 bits, a uh, tweak of 64 bits, and a variable key length of uh, 80 or 128 bits. Uh, Twickable uh, twine consists of three parts. The first one uh, is the round function, which consists of uh, eight type two generalized Feistel structure followed by a shuffle, uh, sh a shuffle operation over 16 nibble. And the second part is the key schedule. Uh, T-twine use the same key schedule of uh, twine. The third part is the tweak scheduling function. At the first, uh, the tweak is loaded to 16 nibble state T, uh, at, and at uh, each round, the first six nibble uh, are used as the round tweak, then the 16 nibbles are shuffled. In the following, I will show our distinguishing attack against uh, T-twine. And since T-twine is an extension of uh, twine, which has 16 round integral distinction, our motivation is to study the effect of the freedom gained by adding uh, a tweak to the structure. 
so we utilize the mixed integral linear programming to find the longest integral distinction in three setting uh, setting three attack settings uh, chosen tweak uh, chosen tweak plain text and chosen tweak cipher text and we will use these notations to present the status of each label of the tweak plain text and cipher text uh, so in the first uh, tweak, uh, in the first setting is uh, the first setting is a chosen tweak setting. In this setting, all plain text bits are fixed to constant values, and some or all bits of the tweak are active. Our strategy in this setting to find the longest distinction, uh, whatever the data complexity, and then try to reduce the data complexity. Uh, so first, we uh, set all bits of the tweak to active. And after running uh, the, searches, the search process for many rounds, we find that there is no distinction for 12 or more rounds. And the longest distinction is 11 round one. In the second step, we, were, we try to reduce the data complexity of that 11 round uh, by minimizing the number of active nib in that week. Fortunately, we find this two distinction uh, with only one active nib. Uh, it should be mentioned that the designer uh, also report 11 round integral distinction with three active nibbles in the tweak and two uh, balanced bit in the cipher text size. Uh, however, when we test this distinction using our MILB model, we found only one balanced bit in the cipher uh, text. And since this uh, three uh, distinction uh, has the data complexity in, in practical data complexity, we verified the correctness of them experimentally to validate our result. The second uh, setting is a chosen tweak plain text setting. Uh, in this setting, some of the plain text bits are active and the remaining bits are constant. And for the tweak, some or all bits are active and the remaining bits are constant. Like in previous setting, we are looking for the longest distinction in two steps. In the first step, we uh, set uh, one bit of the plain text to constant and the remaining uh, 63 bits to active. And for tweak, uh, we set all the 64 bit to active. Uh, we found that the longest distinction can cover 19 rounds. Then uh, in the second step, we try to reduce the data complexity by minimizing the number of active bits in post plain text and the tweak. But unfortunately, the distinction doesn't exist if we set any two bits in the plain text to constant. Finally, uh, we found this distinction with uh, seven or eight bits active on the tweak. So data complexity of this distinction are two to the power uh, 70 or 71 chosen uh, tweak uh, plain text, uh, 63 bit active on plain text and seven or eight bit active uh, on uh, tweak. So in addition to the previous distinctions, uh, we found another 19 round distinction with only uh, 63 uh, active bits on the plain text and six active uh, bits on the tweak. Uh, it gave one balanced nibble uh, after 19 round. So uh, its data complexity is uh, to the power 69 chosen tweak plain text. Like uh, any integral cryptanalysis, uh, we, append, uh, we, we append some rounds. Uh, in our case, we append seven rounds after this distinction in case of uh, T-Twine 80 and eight rounds in case of T-Twine 128. Then we guess some round keys uh, to check if the last nibble is balanced or not. Uh, this figure is the analysis round uh, in case of T-Twine 80. Uh, the guess step uh, in the case of T280 include 19 round keys or 76 bits of the key. So if we guess this directly with uh, 2 to the power 69 com data complexity, the time complexity of our attack will exceed the exhaustive search. So uh, to solve this problem, we employ the meet in the middle uh, technique. Shortly, uh, instead of computing uh, XIR, uh, 
directly and check if the XOR sum of it equal to zero or not. We uh, compute the XOR sum of uh, ZI and uh, XI plus one L separately and independently. Then check if uh, the two XOR sum are equal or not. And since uh, the path to ZI or ZI, uh, XI plus one L include less round keys, uh, then the time to compute the XOR sum of ZI plus the time to compute the XOR sum of XI plus one L is less than the total time to compute the XOR, uh, XOR sum of XIR directly. So instead of uh, this uh, passes to compute uh, the balanced uh, nipple, uh, we compute this pass and then uh, compute this pass. Uh, so uh, our attack against uh, 26 rounds of T twine is proceeded as follows. Uh, first, uh, we initialize to hash table uh, HZ and HX to store the XO sum of Z and the X. Then we get some round keys and compute the XO sum of Z, then store this value on HZ. Uh, and get some round keys of uh, uh, round keys and compute x, uh, the XO sum of x, then store this value in H, uh, x. Then find the round keys that lead it to the same value. And these round keys are the candidate of the right round keys. Then we compute the candidate of the master key from the round keys candidate. And finally, uh, we get the right master key by exhaustive search over the candidates using two pairs of plain text and cipher text. This table summarizes the process uh, of computing uh, the XOR sum of Z uh, and its time complexity. Uh, to reduce the time complexity more, we can repeat the previous step using different data sets. Uh, in our attack against uh, 26 round of T2080, uh, we can achieve the lowest time complexity when we use three uh, data sets. Moreover, we can uh, append one round before the distinction, so we can attack 27 and 28 rounds of the two variant of T2. And by using the, uh, by, the, by using the dynamically chosen plain text method, we can guarantee that we don't, we will not use the full code book. Uh, this table summarizes the complexity of our attacks and uh, contrasts them with the complexity of the impossible differential attacks presented at Africa Crypto 2000, uh, 2020. Uh, so our attacks are the best uh, published attack against the post variant of T twine. Uh, so to sum up, uh, we have studied the security of T-Twine against integral uh, cryptanalysis. Uh, precisely, uh, we have shown that adding a tweak to the round function structure gives the attacker more round to target a large number of, a large number of rounds in T-Twine comparing to the conventional uh, twine. Uh, in particular, we are, we are able to construct several integral distinctions that cover 19 rounds of T-Twine, whereas the longest distinction covers only 16 rounds of uh, Twine. And by using one of these distinctions, we launch a key recovery attack against uh, 27 and 28 of T-Twine 80 and T-Twine 128 uh, uh, and these attacks are the best published attack against T twine. Thank you for your attentions and if you have any question please send me.